Getting all set for the second of the McLaren Trophy races here at Monza. We had an absolute cracker yesterday. The field wasn't large, but Tommy Erdos, we had some brilliant racing. Yes, absolutely, Bruce. A cracking race yesterday, uh, and uh, the the old drivers, really AMs and pros, gave us a, an excellent display of how to go racing here at Monza. Great weather again, so uh, looking forward to the second race. Now, as yesterday, we've got the two blue and uh, orange SMC Motorsport McLarens on the front row of the grid. Yesterday, the racing was very, very good. Talking of the grid, let's go down there because Gemma Scott has caught up with Albert Jochums and he's going to tell us what he's thinking about as he looks for the start. Albert, you're all smiles at the moment, taking the second stint of this race, yeah. a circuit that's fast, that's full of history. Looking forward to this one? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yesterday we had a great day and uh, it showed that the team has prepared an excellent car for us. Uh, speed is really great. And I've been able to uh, improve uh, continuously over the weekend, so I'm uh, yeah, quite excited to uh, get into the car as soon as Charles brings it in. Hopefully in a front position, yeah. And you've had quite a season so far, it's been a good one. Yeah, it's been a good one, made good progress. We had some struggles here and there, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's an amazing season. So, really happy. Yeah, and being in Monza is like amazing. Yesterday to write my signature just two pages ahead of Lando Norris' signature. I'm a big fan of Lando for long. He's a great example for me on how he, yeah, how he races, but also how he is. And that's just amazing to be able to do that. The McLaren purist. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Have a great race. Thank you, Gemma. Albert Jochums, he'll be taking the second stint, but Charles Volsman, his teammate, was flying in the second half of the race yesterday, really closing up on the front runners and came away with uh, second place. He was, and uh, throughout practice, in free practice, before the uh, qualifying and, uh, and the race, Charles had already shown his pace uh, here at Monza, and uh, he's uh, just uh, outside the second row there uh, behind... Uh, uh, Thomas Pintos uh, in the SMC car. So, uh, yeah, watch for Charles in this race. He'll definitely be uh, uh, challenging at the front. Uh, it'll be a very exciting race with all the pro drivers starting. And, uh, yeah, Eric Barron's there in the second row as well, or call it the third row as a staggered start. But, uh, yeah, he'll be, uh, he'll be keen to get going. Well, particularly as he didn't get a result that he deserved. But let's go down to a, dr a driver who's really been making moves this weekend. And Gemma is with Fiona James. Fiona, keeping it strong for the ladies in this championship, love to see it. Do you get nervous? Are you feeling excited? You've had a good season so far. Yeah, no, it's been good fun. Um, yesterday was really good fun, I have to say. Jaden and I both had some great battles and um, really looking forward to getting stuck in today. Absolutely. Well, you'll take the second stint and I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Enjoy. Jaden Kelly is the driver who will be kicking off in that car, but uh, Fiona James thumbs up from her. And uh, she certainly was picking up pace through the course of qualifying this morning. Set her best lap right at the end, pretty much as the chequered flag came in. That gained a position, so they'll be starting from sixth on the grid. You can see her car top left of the image there with the uh, yellow and black uh, colours down its flank. And then the orange car tucked in behind. That's got uh, Duncan Tappy at the wheel, sharing with Ron Trenker. And um, let's see how that one goes. Because as you said, Tommy, it's the pro drivers who are starting. We've got pro drivers and am drivers, but when you've got the pro-am combination, you expect the pro drivers to really get the move on. Yeah, exciting, uh, very exciting. The second race with, uh, of course, in Fiona's car, there'll be Jaden Kelly, Jaden Kelly uh, who gave us an, a very exciting race yesterday against uh, Brad Ellis. Uh, that was a, a really close one to call until the very end. Uh, so, yeah, there'll be some, uh, I'm sure there'll be some sparks again from these guys. Uh, yeah, can't wait uh, for it to start. Obviously, the uh, pit window for this race is a little bit different between 7 uh, and 17 minutes. Uh, of course, uh, the pros will probably extend it closer to the 17-minute mark. So, yeah, we have uh, a good 15 minutes that's uh, uh, going to be a good battle so uh, one thing we always get to say is um, that there's something new there's always something new in motor racing what are we looking at here this is something a little bit special so that's uh, the uh, the upgraded uh, Artura Trophy car for 2025. It's the Artura Evo, and uh, a very exciting uh, a car for uh, for the uh, drivers to uh, get to grips with for next year. Uh, upgraded uh, horsepower up to about 620 horsepower, more aero, bigger tires, um, better cooling. Uh, we're looking at probably between one and one and a half seconds a lap faster than the current cars now, and they are pretty fast already. And you know what, Tommy, with a lot of the drivers on this grid, I think a lot of them will in themselves find a 
second and second half to next year, you know, when they get in their second, uh, even third season in this championship. And we've heard from a lot of drivers who don't have a lot of experience, but they've, they have a love for McLaren or a love for these sort of cars. They've got in, and the ones that listen to their pro drivers, they're the ones that make the advances. I mean, yesterday was a, was a great example of uh, the the progress. Then we were able to witness the progress as uh, a lot of the M's have, have, have made and uh, a four-way uh, battle going on throughout the whole race. So uh, it's great to watch that. I'm sure we have some more of that today. Yeah, absolutely so. But SMC Motorsport seems to be reigning supreme at the moment. But we've got Alessandro Geppert starting from Tommy Pintos on the front row. Then Eric Behrens, look out for his car. It's all black and gold. With Charles Volsman, who was super quick in the number 42 entry through the second phase. Danny Henry, he doesn't like teammates, he races all on his own. Jaden Kelly, he'll be starting the Speedsworth Motorsport car before handing that over to Fiona James. And Bradley Ellis, look for him, he was very, very busy in the second half of the race. And Duncan Happy, Happy didn't even get to start, uh, have a run in the race yesterday because his car was out. And then we get the two 570S class cars. They start sort of almost on their own separate grid, but Ollie Webb, and uh, Kevin Rorschach will be bringing up the rear, but maybe we'll see them advancing up through the order. Let's wait and see. So, right now, heat in the tyres. There's the third place car of Eric Behrens. Look out for Charles Forsman with the orange nose on his. Championship, it's a, a, a dominant uh, position for Alejandro Hep Heppert and uh, Gonzalo de Andres. 32 points clear of the sister car, the number seven car of Alberto Batista and Tommy Pintos. Then uh, Joe Wheeler still sitting there on third in the championship. But should be over overhauled probably today by Charles Volsman and Albert Jochums. And then comes uh, Jaden Kelly in fifth place along with Fiona James. But for the drivers in question at the moment in the Arturas, they're the ones we find at the front of the pack ahead of those two 570S, the sort of older model in behind focus. We saw yesterday a few little slip-ups, but not from the number 11 crew. They absolutely got things nailed down. Of course, the driver who started yesterday is the driver who will be uh, doing the second stint today. So you get plenty of variety. The two races are never the same as each other at any of the McLaren Trophy races. Yeah, just incidentally, just uh, car number seven yesterday had a little bit of a straight-line deficit, uh, and uh, this was... Uh, um, they diagnosed the problem, uh, and uh, so it's back to full speed again. So we should see a better challenge from the number seven crew. Obviously, we've got Thomas Pintos there against Alejandro. Uh, that's always a great battle to watch. Uh, but yeah, some uh, some excitement coming up uh, very soon here with the uh, pros in the car. And uh, and uh, in terms of the 570s, uh, yesterday, of course, Ryan James and uh, Ollie Webb uh, clinched the title for the 570 series. So congratulations to them. They, they've been great competitors. and. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, and they've announced uh, for next year they'll be up to the uh, top class in the Artura Trophy. So uh, great uh, to hear that, that they'll be uh, piloting one of these new Artura Evo cars. Yeah, it really is the case. And Ollie Webb's been been around the block many times. Top level driver in all, single seaters in in, high, in you know classic uh, frontline cars racing in the world, endurance championship, sports prototypes, but GTs, everything. But he's the sort of guy who's got the experience. But you still have to be the right person as a driver. It doesn't matter if you're quick. It's can you explain it to someone who's learning? And certainly, uh, he's clearly got a very good relationship there. So the cars coming onto the grid. Eight cars in the Artura class. And we've got just the pair at the back. You can see the slightly different body shape of the 570Ss uh, forming up at the back of the grid. A little bit of a gap back to them. But it's the two blue and orange SMC Motorsports uh, Arturas on the front row of the grid. It's Alejandro Heppert from Tommy Pintos. I'm going to see if anybody can challenge Eric Behrens and Charles Fonsman might fancy their chances of trying to get a jump on them because this is their opportunity to get ahead because the, the two cars from SMC Motorsport have looked very handy indeed. And so the clock is counting down for 45 minutes. It looks like the pole starting car from Alejandro Heppert has got the job done. Challenging on the grass. Oh, dearie me, that's a slight concern. Eric Behrens getting a, a little... No, he's on the outside. He's going to third place in... And in behind, oh, a few drivers taking alternate lines there through the chicane, but the important thing, there is no contact. Sometimes it's better to take a bit of evasive action there. So blue and orange out front, but it's uh, Charles Volsman who's made an amazing start. I sense that was his best opportunity to do so. He got his nose in front of Alejandro Heppert and Tommy Pintos. That was late breaking. Eric Behrens holding down the uh, fourth place. And then... Everybody else uh, line astern behind, but that was a great start from Charles Volsman. And he must have absolutely, Tommy, nailed that getaway. Great, great getaway there from Charles Volsman. He's showed a lot of pace. He has been showing a lot of pace uh, all week. And uh, great to see him uh, jump the two SMC cars. And uh, more importantly for Pintos, he's ahead of Alejandro at the moment. And crucially for the championship, that's what needs to happen. For them to go to Barcelona, 
when there's another 30 points uh, uh, you know, up for grabs, he needs to finish ahead of the 11 car. Yep, it's pretty much all year it's been 11 ahead of seven. Now they're trying to have a go. Oh, they're going to clash. Got very, very close indeed, but it's still seven with Tommy Pinsos ahead of Alejandro Heppard, who was running out of options of how to get the braking done. In behind Eric Burns, being pushed very, very hard by Brad Ellis. Someone's run wide and kicked up the dirt. Brad Ellis is in the orange car. I think he may have just moved up into fourth place, but the first three, very, very tight indeed. No, is the move done? Yeah, Brad Ellis has got that fourth place, and Behrens has to back it out behind. But actually, I think Behrens has lost two positions there. Yeah, Jay, uh, Jay Kelly's just behind him. Who's that in between? Is that uh, Duncan Tappy? Duncan Tappy has gained a place in there. It's very, very tight. At the front, it's very tight, but Charles Forsman showed a fantastic speed yesterday. He leads the race by six tenths of a second, passing Jaden Kelly there, getting a little bit busy. Great to see Duncan Tappy there in the mix. Uh, had very little time in the car so far here at Monza. Uh, always a great racer, uh, always exciting to watch. Well, here comes the move. Tommy Pintos doesn't fancy staying in second place. He's trying to sweep around the outside, but is that going to be the place to be when they get up to the chicane? I think it probably is. Looks like Charles Volsman, who's now on the right-hand side of the screen, will find himself on the outside when they get to the chicane. But what's the matter here? It's a question who's going to break the later. They're going to try and go in side by side, but Volsman had to back out, and he's going to lose second place, presumably, at that point, because Alejandro Heppert should get the power down sooner. However, Volsman pulls across his nose, so holds on to second place. He's just lost the lead. Question of how long he can hang in there, but the Charles Schwarzman, very tough racer indeed. Brad Ellis and Duncan Tappy are closing in behind the pair of them. Okay, they're in pro am lineups, and these are the pros in the background. Many years with McLaren in behind them. Just double check it is Jaden Kelly yeah, tucked in the background of the shot. But the first three just getting away a little bit for now, but I do sense that uh, Ellis and Tappy in the orange and the black uh, Arturas may be able to close in. Let's see. Yeah, what a great battle. We, we knew this was going to happen, and uh, crucially for Pintos, getting ahead of uh, uh, Schwarzman there and, and, and putting Schwarzman between him and Alejandro, his, his title uh, contender there. And uh, so Pintos done a fantastic job there at the beginning of the race. Yeah, and just, Alejandro Heppert getting a, a very, very wide on the exit of the Ascari chicane. That's in the number 11 car. There we are, right in the middle of the screen. Managed to get just enough traction to keep accelerating out of the chicane, and then therefore, but he's lost a little bit of ground. It's these tiny little moments. Moments, Tommy, where you've made a marginal error, but it compounds. If you've not got tyres clear of dust, you just don't get the full acceleration, the traction you need. And therefore, Alejandro Heppert has just dropped back a little bit on that lap. Yeah, he lost. Actually, he gained on Charles Forsman. Of course he did, because he was uh, further behind the previous time. But uh, it was Tommy Pintos who uh, has pulled a little bit clear, but only half a second. There's Duncan, Duncan tappy has gone ahead of Brad Ellis. Well, this is going to be a ding-dong battle. Great move there by Duncan, and uh, especially on Brad Ellis. He's, uh, you know, it doesn't get much harder than uh, Brad Ellis in terms of racing uh, for position. Uh, we saw that yesterday against Jaden Kelly, and uh, yeah, great to see Duncan there just getting stuck in. Yeah, Duncan didn't get his time on the racing tarmac here yesterday because Ron Trenker didn't get to complete that first into the race in the background there. <laughs> Great little scrap. Duncan Tappy with the black nose on his car and the all orange car with uh, Brad Ellis tucked in behind. And behind then they've got Jaden Kelly and uh, some of that trio, with the exception of Duncan Tappy, had some real scrapping yesterday. But first to second is not going out. Tommy Pintos still leads the race. This is the car, number seven, that had the straight line speed issue yesterday. They've sorted it. You don't have to tell me what they did to sort it, but clearly they're very happy with that. So Tommy Pintos leading the race. Charles Volsman, I thought he might fall away. I thought he'd really attack early on, but uh, what do I know? But he's ahead of Alejandro Heppert. This corner last time around, Heppert got a little bit loose on the exit of the chicane. Is he going to be tighter? He fell back a little bit in third place, but now he's got right on the tail as Volsman in second. Yeah, yet again, one of those cars. In this case, it was Duncan Tappy running wide out of the uh, third chicane. Cars in the background are shot. Eric Behrens, the black nose on his car. And the best, the better of the two 570s, Ollie Webb, has got ahead of Danny Henry. Danny had a great race yesterday, but he's down in ninth out of ten, and he's only just ahead of Kevin Rorschach. Yes, Danny, uh, uh, like uh, Eric Behrens, Danny is a solo entry in the M class, and of course uh, they will have uh, the advantage of uh, 10 seconds less of stationary time in the pits. So uh, they need to just try and stay with these pro guys as much as they can. Yes, in so many ways, drivers who are going so they have to remember not to fight for every corner because they've got a little bit of a built-in cushion. Oh, Jaden Kelly, is that going to work? Three abreast through the first chicane. He had a little thing. Brad Ellis decided, what are you guys doing? And he backed out of it. But that, that was over-ambitious. I might have a word in the paddock afterwards there because none of these pro drivers want to end up being taken out in, a, in an incident where you could avoid it. But luckily for everybody involved, 
Brad Ellis is possibly the wisest of the lot, but he's paid a little bit of a, a price for that because he's, he's lost a bit of a momentum. There he is in sixth place at the back of the pack. I've got to say that was a very bold move there by uh, Jaden Kelly. He did pull it off, but uh, it took uh, some, you know, uh, work there from Duncan Tappy there. So they knew he was there and, uh, you know, they, they all made around it safely. So, uh, so far, very hard racing, but at this stage, clean. And for all their, their teammates, the AMs in these pram lineups, they'll be going, are you going to bring me a car to race at the midway point of the race? But uh, you can be sure that when the pit window opens, the, the pros will stay out as long as they can as, to be sure that they'll come back in and uh, just in time to hand over to the AM teammates. Of course, it makes sense to have your faster driver in the car for as long as you possibly can. Right, Duncan Tappy, fourth place, fifth place, Jaden Kelly. And behind the plotting, scheming, trying to work out how to gain a place or two back is Brad Ellis in the number 69 bright orange car. Yeah, just uh, noticing a little bit of body work yeah. moving there on Jaden Kelly's car as well as um, Brad Ellis. So was there any contact that we missed? Because um, those two, those guys were very very close together, and uh, you can see the right front uh, of the uh, of the um, the um, uh, Kelly Speedworks car. Yeah, and the left, and the left, the rear, left rear of uh, yeah of uh, uh, Brad Ellis uh, McLaren is uh, also moving around. So uh, there may have been some contact we didn't see. They may do, and now Brad has got a really big toe from Jaden Kelly. Is it payback time? Will sixth become fifth? Wait, wait, wait. Don't show your can. Be a, be a poker player. Yeah, you can see that the uh, little bodywork damage on the orange car tucking back in behind. And all the time this is happening, it's allowing those first three cars to escape. They're nearly four seconds clear of this second trio. It's still Tommy Pintos leading the race. Seven tenths of a second clear of Charles Foltzman and Alejandro Hepe. We've seen have a, ha him have a couple of loose moments. Uh, but he's still holding on to third place. They're covered by just 1.4 seconds, the top three. Now let's take a look at what happened. This is the start of the race. Where is Charles Falsman? He's sitting in third position. He goes to the outside, into second, breaks so late. He takes the lead in the number 42. That was a, a fantastic move. And uh, Brad Ellis takes the scenic route down through the chicane, and he rejoins the pack at the exit of the chicane. But it was superb late breaking from Charles Falsman that uh, earned him that uh, lead of the race. In behind a few other cars getting a little bit loose, but uh, I guess importantly from SMC Motorsport, their number 11 car, well clear in the championship. It was the number seven that got ahead of that particular pairing. And that's the one in the lead. Here it is, Tommy Pintos at the wheel. Still got Charles Falsman tucked in behind. Still got Alejandro Hepper tucked in behind him. Great movement, great shots there through the third, third chicane. Then's the gap of best part of four seconds. Just wait for it. We'll see the second gaggle of cars coming through. And Duncan Tappy is now just starting to edge clear of Jaden Kelly. I sense Brad Ellis might be slightly faster than Kelly, but he's got to get himself back in front. Of course, he eventually you know, got out of the way when he realised the Australian wasn't going to be stopped down into that first uh, chicane. But he may be stewing a little bit in his suit, thinking, yeah, 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 come on, I've got to get back. Yeah, Pintos again uh, controlling the front now. He's got a little bit of a gap to Charles. And uh, remember, uh, these guys will have some success penalty from yesterday's race, but the number seven car doesn't because they finished uh, in sixth position. So they will stay in the pits seven seconds less than the number 11 car. Crucially, obviously, the car that they are up against in the championship. So, so far, a very good start for the number seven crew. But these, there's nothing between them, really. Those three guys are pretty much the same pace. No, they really are. But the last lap has not been so good for Alejandro Hepe. Let's see, he did a one minute. Well, he's only three tenths of a second down, two tenths of a second down. But this lap, he just seems to be falling away a little bit. And that's really not going to help when he knows he's got those extra seven seconds at a standstill in the pit stop. So suddenly, the advantage is going to the sister car. Number, number seven, as you said, down in sixth place yesterday after a couple of moments, one for each of the drivers, one for Adalberto Batista and then for Tommy Pintos in the second half of the race. But this can help them close the gap. Because, of course, the final two races at uh, Barcelona, isn't it, in the middle of October, they're going to come soon. But if the number seven crew can claw back some of that deficit, the points deficit to the sister car, that is what they need to do. Very crucial, this race, for them, because they are 32 points behind uh, the number 11 car. Uh, of course, they need to get those two or three or four points, or as many as they can, so they can go to Barcelona with a mathematical chance. So, uh, so far, it's working for them. Yeah, and it's 15 points for a race win, 30 points to play for. Yeah, so... They've just got to stay in the hunt. Right now, they're leading the hunt. Tommy Pintos, Charles Falsman. Let's take a look at slow-mo of the flow through the chicane. You can see how the car's really nimble, Tommy. They really do turn on a dime. Great action shot there in slow-mo. Look at those cars. A um, little bit more of a gap there, perhaps, to Charles. Uh, and so, yeah, Pintos doing a great job there. Very consistent in his lap times. And... Uh, yeah, just keeping that gap uh, nice. And uh, as you said, Gephardt now uh, falling back a little bit further. 
Yeah, tenth of a second gained by the race leader, Tommy Pintos, so he's nearly seven tenths of a second clear. And 1.3 seconds back to the third place car. Then comes the second trio. Similar distance between all three of them. Duncan Tappy, Jaden Kelly and Bradley Ellis. Again, slow-mo shots there. Duncan Tappy for the Greystone GT team coming through. So, Tommy Pintos controlling things, Alejandro Hepper pushing on in the other way. Gepper in third place. Between them, Charles Svolsman. How's this one again to settle down? Has settled down, but every time it looks as though Tommy Pintos is just making a bit of a break. Charles Svolsman shows the speed he showed in the second half of yesterday's race, and he closes in all over again. And Alejandro Gepper just not able to get things together. Ollie Webb having a quiet race on his own. He's uh, four and a bit seconds down on Eric Behrens. He's up into eighth place, but he's leading the 570S class. And he'll be keeping an eye on the Arturas because he and his teammate are going to step up in 2025 to join the top class. And of course, we've seen that uh, Evo version of the Artura just leading the, the pack around at the start of the race. More power, more aero, more everything. And that's what they're going to be aiming for. Yeah, so happy for those two. They've, they've done such a great job this season in the uh, 570S. And uh, Oli mentioned yesterday, they really did do justice the fact that there were not quite enough cars in the class this year because their performances have been really, really top-notch. Uh, and especially Ryan James uh, as the M of, the, of, of the, the duo doing so well and being so consistent in his driving. So really happy for them moving up to the Artura Evo uh, next year. They'll be real contenders. Right, the pit window is open. It's a 45-minute race, and uh, so the window is open, but the pros are going to stay out as long as they possibly can, try and stretch whatever performance advantage they may have. The top three cars still covered by not a lot, just one and a half seconds, 1.6 seconds, but the first two just finding a bit more of a gain on Alejandro Geppert, and Geppert knows his car, number 11, is have, has to be seven seconds longer at a standstill. I tell you what, if he sheds seven seconds, he's going to come out behind Duncan Tappy when Tappy hands over to Ron Trenker, when the pros hand over to the Ams. So it could be really quite a factor. And if you've got Tappy coming out behind Jaden Kelly, it's car for Fiona James or to gain position as well. So it could be a real swing against the championship leaders in the number 11. Uh, Artura, but they've just got to wait and take it through to the end of the race. We've still got over half an hour remaining, so plenty of time of racing. Time st oh dear, a sudden moment from Tommy Pintos. Maybe the extra pressure from Charles Forsman, but I think he'd already made a bit of a slip, -up, slip up at the exit of the second Lesbos. The pressure is right on. Is it going to be a passing manoeuvre into the third chicane? I don't sense so, but this is the first sign that Tommy Pintos is now really starting to feel the heat. And I'll tell you what, almost every lap, the first of the three sectors around the circuit they're fairly even, but the second one is where you see the pace coming from Charles Volsman. And that, that is a sector that ends just after the third chicane. And now Pintos, maybe his car's looking composed. Let's hope he is, because that was a moment where it could have gone horribly wrong. And a moment where his teammate, Alberto Batista, went for a spin yesterday, just looking to see if there's any damage, because it really was a rattle over the curbing there. Yeah, there was, a, I thought I saw some bodywork flying around as he came off uh, the uh, Lesmo tube. But, um it doesn't seem that way, just looking at the back end of the car. Very strange. Did he run over something maybe that was on the ground? I'm not sure. Right, Tommy Pintos enters the pit. So he's decided, no, not Tommy Pintos. I'm seeing whose car came in. Yes, it was Tommy Pintos. So suddenly we've got uh, Charles Vossman leading the race from Alejandro Geppert. And then Duncan Tappy up to third, but about to lose third because at the very moment Jaden Kelly goes around the outside in car number 17. He'll be handing over to Ian James, but the first handover will come for the number seven crew. Tommy Pintos out and Alberto Batista, the Brazilian driver, being strapped in right now. Opportunistic move there from Jaden Kelly getting ahead of Duncan Tappy. Brad Ellis a little bit further down, but actually in the pits now. So half of the field diving into the pits on at the same lap. But uh, what happens if you're Charles Volsman? Do you continue as long as possible? Well, yes, the answer is yes. Albert Joachims can wait a little longer because uh, Charles Volsman is super, super quick in that number 42. Yes, Charles needs to really maximize that because he will get also five seconds added to his pit stop. Remember, he finished second yesterday, so he needs to really maximize his time on track. So many things to consider, but that place change. Duncan Tappy falling back behind Jaden Kelly. Or let's look at it another way. Jaden Kelly in the number 17 Speedworks Motorsport entry getting ahead of Duncan Tappy. Did he just cap catch him napping or did he just get a far, far better toe? And then Duncan Tappy going, you know what? I, I'm not going to fight you here because uh, 
we could have contact. And my job is to get the car as far up the track as I can before handing it over to Ron, to Ron Trenker, the American racer. That's Greystone GT. Okay, sitting in behind, but you're, you're quite right. So if you take a victory in one race, the next race is seven seconds extra, five seconds for second place, and three for third. That's it. Very that, good. That's the maths, and uh, I suspect the, uh, you'll see both of the cars coming in this time, otherwise they'll be running out of time soon. But yeah, so we have uh, seven seconds added to number 11, uh, five seconds to number 42, and three seconds to 69, the uh, Brad Ellis and Klaus Halswick. Okay, so in comes Charles Horsman from the fleeting lead of the race. Remember, Tommy Pintos was leading. He had a little bit of a rough ride out of the second Lesmo a couple of laps ago, reported immediately to the pits. And now uh, that's Albert Jochum's trying to, to free from captivity Charles Horsman. Charles clambers out, remembers to take everything else that he needs with him. Bubble gum, stuff like that. So remember, they, these guys have to be stationary for a certain amount of time. So you can see them coming out of the car fairly leisurely. There's not a lot of rush there. I remember in my time doing driver changes, you used to hurt yourself just getting in and out of the cars because you had to do it so quickly. But uh, yeah, just for safety reasons as well, we, you know, the, the, uh, the window for, for them changing drivers is, is a much easier one in that sense. Uh, keeps everything safe. Um, but yeah, so the, uh, the solo M entries, remember, will have 10 seconds less stationary in the pits. So this is where Eric Barons and Danny Henry should have a bit of an advantage come the, for the, you know, the pit stops. And, the, and uh, of course, there's no driver change. So for, uh, they should uh, come out in, uh, in a good, good position. And this was a car that Tommy Pitos led away, got into the lead on the opening lap of the race, but it's now in the hands of Adalberto Batista, but with uh, not a top result yesterday, they have been able to do the minimum pit stop time, and uh, the, the three rivals that uh, finished first, second, and third yesterday will be coming out surely behind them. And there is Albert Jochums taking over from... Oh, gosh, suddenly <laughs> three cars almost totally together in the pit lane. We'll see how that one shakes out. But number seven should be into the race. Yeah, Adalberto Batista, he's at full racing pace, going down the start finish straight while his rivals, lights flashing. Yeah, they might be slightly ahead as they come out, but he's at full speed, races past them. And Ron Trenker in the Greystone GT car coming out and in behind Albert Jochums and in behind him. Or is it Ron Trenker behind him? No, it's, uh, sorry, it's, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to get going, please. And that's the number 11. That shows how far down the order it's fallen there, the number 11. Yesterday's race-winning car is Gonzalo de Andres, who hops on board that one. Yes, Gonzalo there, and you can see that Alberto actually has a good gap on, uh, on uh, Gonzalo uh, on track. So that's worked out really well for the number seven crew. Um, and just spotted there, number 11 car coming out of the pits, crossing over that blend, blend light. I don't know if that's going to be noted, oh. but uh, that could be something uh, that we'll find out later uh, in, in the race. Uh, but yes. Uh, well, it's go. getting very busy at the chicanes, Tommy, but that, we've just seen Alberto Batista getting a little bit crossed up down at the first chicane. He, he kept it on the black stuff, but he lost a bit of momentum. But it's also important he hasn't lost any cool for the Brazilian racer to settle down. He's got a gift at the moment. He's leading this race. We've got a gaggle of four cars. That's almost half the field knows to tell. Ron Tranker at the front of that little grouping. But he's got Albert Jochens tucked in behind in 42. In terms of natural lap, pa lap pace, you would expect Albert to go on by. But he's got to pick his moment, pick it wisely. But he's got a couple of rivals right on his tail, including um, Gonzalo de Andres. Gonzalo in the number 11, that was a car that was stationary for an extra seven seconds. So the fact he's fallen by these cars is totally down to that. And Eric Behrens on his tail. Eric, I sense, might be working his way up through this pack as well. And I'm hearing someone having a spin in front of one of the cameras. It's amazing what you can pick up, sort of ambient sounds around the circuit. But uh, right here, right now, it's looking pretty good for any of the cars in the bunch ahead of this one. This, these could be fighting for the final places on the podium. But number seven, despite a slow start to its lap, Adalberto Batista just looking for the interval. Ron Trenker in second, 10 seconds down. OK, that's Adalberto's lead. He's got to hold it for 24 minutes, so he's got to keep the focus. But he had good speed yesterday, but he did have one moment where he got a little bit locked up and crossed up. And uh, Ron Trenker almost getting a kiss from Gonzalo to Andres, second, third, and right in behind in fourth place, Eric Behrens. But it's sometimes how you... That was super close, Tommy. You winced a little bit there. It was very close, but I've got to say, this was an absolutely disastrous outlap for Gonzalo de Andres in the number 11 car. He lost so much time on the outlap. And then just to cap it all, coming into the chicane just there, we all saw 
uh, you know, he had to go around uh, Trenka there. So, yeah, um, this has been a dream sort of turnover, uh, changeover, sorry, in the pits for the number seven car. And they really needed that after the bad luck of yesterday and the issues they had. So, uh, uh, you know, the good note about that is that the championship stays open for now. But uh, let's see what happens. There's still a lot of racing to go. Certainly is. Eric Behrens looking very, very busy. The number 88 car, the Alfab. A livery black and gold car moves ahead of Ron Trenka. Ron being careful there. He knows he hasn't got the pace for some of these rivals and uh, keeping it clean and tidy. The next person about to attack is Albert Jochums. Hasn't made the move yet. I thought he might be making it in the previous lap, but it was a question of other cars around him slotting into where he wanted to go. And here comes Fiona James, the car with the grey and yellow flashes on its flanks, just at the background of that pack. So she's in uh, sixth place overall. Yeah, Joachim there with a very good exit out of Ascari. You know, he might be able to get a slipstream pass uh, Trenka maybe into a Parabolica. We'll see that. But great to see these guys now scrapping again. Uh, you know, all the amps uh, very close uh, in the second stage of the race. Fiona again getting in the mix. Yeah, and was also just looking... Well, look, that is such an advantage for Alberto Batista. Remember, it was 10 seconds, 10.1 seconds last time around, and the Brazilian racer turning down now into the first chicane. Next car should be the sister car of Gonzalo D'Andres, and he is now 10.7 seconds down. Eric Behrens into third place overall. But he's losing a bit of ground, but Ron Trenka actually going very nicely tucked in behind him. So the hunt is on for the SMC Motorsport crew. It's uh, really going to be very busy indeed. The final few laps of the race last time around. Actually, he only gained, he actually lost Adalberto Batista, actually two tenths of a second faster. Sorry, my maths was uh, not so good there. But uh, let's see how Gonzalo de Andres settles down. He was certainly very quick in the first part of yesterday's race. However, as you reported, Tommy, the number seven, the sister car, had a lack of straight line speed. Today, they seem to have found it. And the two SMC Motorsport cars are sitting there first and second. Here comes fourth place Ron Trenka. Oh, it's a bit of a bit of bodywork or but no, a bit of tire there lying in the track. Eric Behrens has passed it. Then comes Ron Trenka. Here he is with it. You can see the Deer logo on the Greystone GT coming through. Albert Jochums has not yet made the moves. He's about to come under attack by Fiona James there because Fiona's getting closer and closer in the number 17. A bit surprised about uh, Joachim there. Uh, he had a, lot, a very good pace yesterday in the race and uh, it's taken a little bit longer this time to get through uh, Trenka there. And uh, so Trenka doing a great job and uh, it's got to be said, Duncan Tappy in the opening stint as well, putting that number 80 car in very good position. So that's uh, yeah replay there but when Thomas Pintos went wide coming out of Lesbo and a bit of body work there flying out. Right, and the car that was chasing him at the time has now got Albert Jochums on board. It's car 42. He still can't get past Ron Trenko. So for the three crews ahead, Alberto Batista in the number seven SMC Motorsport entry, Gonzalo D'Andres in the number 11 entry by the same team, and Eric Behrens in car 88. That's allowing them to pull further clear. Ron Trenka controlling a bit of a train, but look, he's got a fantastic exit uh, from Parabolica, still in fourth place, and nothing that Albert Jochums appears to be able to do. I think the move might be coming from Fiona James, but Klaus Halsig in the orange car, car number 69, closing in the background of the pack, and at that very moment, Ron Trenka loses concentration, but decides not to spin the car. He'd rather just slightly cut the chicane. Is he going to let them through? Well, I think he maybe has no choice. He lost a bit of momentum coming out, and finally, Albert Jochums gets past Fiona James, maybe as well. She's going slightly faster on the long, long sweep through Biasoni up to the second chicane, and you can see the body left rear corner of the number 69 entry we mentioned it had a little, little bit of damage brad ellis we think was given a clatter by uh jane kelly but look it's, it's flicking out like a semaphore arm when you get a rear shot of the orange number 69 you'll see the the bodywork is really out at about 45 degrees let's take a look as the cars sweep through this corner look for the orange car in the back of the pack and you can even on the head-on shot yeah you can just see the left rear corner is as though it's like a penguin's wing sticking out yeah, I'm not sure what happened with Ron Trenka there, going very slow after... He went wide, obviously, coming into the chicane, but uh, it seemed to have an issue, maybe, a, I don't know, a misshift on the gear or something, but he, he seems to be now slowly getting back up to speed. Yeah, it looks like it's a momentary problem. So there's Fiona James, the model car. You can see a little bit of bodywork. They taped it at... OK, we saw that bodywork a little loose after Jaden Kelly's move where we think he hit Bradley Ellis, uh, but that was taped down. Eric Behrens. Car number 88 started very nicely on the grid today, started in third position. He's running in third position. He's just a second or so down on Gonzalo de Andres, but uh, last time around, 
He actually very slightly gained on him. So second and third are close, but our race leader, best part of 10 seconds clear, Gonzalo uh, De Andres is 10 seconds down on Adalberto Batista. Here's De Andres and Eric Behrens. They're all there about in third place. Yeah, Behrens actually the fastest of the of the top three there, uh, posting the fastest time. So he's got really good pace, Eric, and uh, not able to challenge the guys at the front. Uh, uh, but he's got uh, obviously Adalberto still with a, a you know pretty much a 10 second a gap to P2. So long, long runs for these drivers around the, the Curva Grande. But what we're having is Adalberto Batista pulling clear all the time, getting the chicanes behind him. The, the clock's counting down, 18 minutes remain. His advantage is a whisker under 10 seconds. Here, number 11. Championship leading car, Gonzalo de Andres. Gonzalo had a fantastic first in yesterday. He was under lots of lots of pressure, but uh, he resisted. Oh, there's the rear bodywork damage. It has become rather work, rather worse. A little bit of uh, tape flapping further down. I don't suppose it's doing much to really affect the aerodynamics of the car. But uh, Kevin How for Klaus Halsig, you know, he's rattling on. And now suddenly, suddenly see Danny Henry coming into the background of the shot. He's uh, really caught up in the last two laps. In fact, he gained two and a half seconds on the car in front of him last time. There he comes, white car with a, almost like a Dalmatian with sort of black black spots and squares. There it is in the background of the shot. This is like a carbon copy race of uh, yesterday, really, but a slightly different uh, positioning. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see now the Danny getting stuck in uh, at the back of Klaus Housing. He's just gone wide there, kicked up some gravel. But uh, yeah, it looks like Danny's uh, walking up. Well, look, look what he's done in the last handful of laps. He gained half a second, 1.4 seconds, then 2.6 sec seconds for them there. So the McLaren Trophy Europe race still kicking on. We're hearing the start of the uh, GT3 race. The uh, GT World Challenge Endurance race has been pushed back 15 minutes. We're still trying to complete this one. We've got uh, 16, 17 minutes on the clock. We've got a dominant advantage for Adalberto Batista. We've got Gonzalez D'Andres, his SMC motorsport teammate, in second place. And then stringing out behind Eric Behrens, under a second down in third place. Then comes more of a gap, 11 seconds back to Albert Jochums. And all the cars in behind, Ron Trenker, Klaus Halsig, just going through our shot. That's 80 and 69. And Danny Henry getting into the action behind. In the world of the 570Ss, two of them started today. Ollie James led away at the start of the race, and Ryan James has taken over from him. Sorry, Ollie Webb led away at the start of the race, and uh, Ryan James has taken over from him. And uh, the second of the 570S is Herman Bacchus has taken over from Kevin Rorschach, but they're separated by uh, about 14 seconds. But I guess Tommy Edos, at this point in the race, the gap between first and second is really starting to come down. It was 10 and a bit seconds, it went to nine, now it's eight and a half seconds, but in 16 minutes, do you think Gonzalo D'Andres can uh, reel in Adalberto Batista? I think, uh, given the pace that uh, we can see at the moment, Adalberto, it looks like he's actually just managing that gap. And uh, the, uh, although Gonzalo has had a bit of a, an upper hand on, uh, on uh, Adalberto all week, uh, I think the gap is uh, comfortable enough. But uh, we don't know, you know what the next few minutes are going to bring. Remember, these guys, uh, these cars have been raced very hard at the beginning by the pros. The brakes are a bit of a... a uh, an unknown towards the end of the race, where you can't, you, they can suffer from a long paddle uh, at the end of this race. You know, Monza being very heavy on, on brakes. So, uh, you know, anything can happen. But uh, I would say right now, Alberto is in, a, in a, a reasonably comfortable position with that kind of gap. Right, this is the, the leader in the 570S class. It's a class only of two cars here this weekend, but uh, Ollie Webb kicks off. Ryan James, last time I looked, had a 14-second advantage over uh, Herman uh, Bacchus, but... Uh, so it's staying like that. The driver making the moves is uh, in the middle of that pack. The white and black car, the DTO motorsport entry of Danny Henry, driving solo and uh, pushing on, pushing on all the time. He's just come across the line in seventh place, so he gained a position on Klaus Halsig on this last lap. But the other driver driving solo is Eric Behrens, isn't he? And he's running in third place overall. So still two impressive drives from them. But uh, Danny Henry had fallen quite some way back with that first stint. He had the shorter... Uh, pit stop, but he's really found his form in the second part of the race, as he did yesterday. Maybe he just likes it when the fuel tanks are lighter, and um, maybe he, that handling, that level of handling, just suits him well. 
Yes, and uh, of course the championship is up for grabs in the M class. And uh, uh, yesterday, before the, the the start of the race, uh, there was only three points between Henry and the Barons. So obviously, Barons didn't have a result yesterday. So this is kind of making up for the disappointment that Eric Barons had yesterday and keeping the championship very tight, uh, you know, until the, uh, the last round in Barcelona. But uh, Danny will. He knows now the pace of Eric. He, Eric, you know, is very fast, and uh, he will need to turn up his uh, his game. You know, coming towards the end of this race, and of course, uh, off to Barcelona, he will have to really turn it up. Yeah, absolutely. So, totally different circuit to this one. Great moves coming from uh, Ron Tranka. He's desperately trying to hold on to uh, sixth position. Didn't get to finish the race yesterday, but he's resisting staunchly as uh, Danny Henry gets closer, closer. Has a look here, has a look there. But for now, as they sweep through the shirt, third chicane, it's still the American in front. Danny Henry looks like he's made a slightly better exit from the corner. Can he gain any advantage as they get a slipstream? Not sure he's going to want to make a manoeuvre into the Parabolica, but if he could be there in ultimate position to make a charge down the start for the straight to use the toe, he'll be doing that. And tucked in behind in the background, you've got uh, Klaus Halsey, car number 69, the bright orange one. Yeah, the intent is there from Danny Henry. Why wait for a slipstream when you can... OK, you'll come out of here. Well, I thought he was actually going to come out just behind. He's come out alongside. There is no slipstream to be had for those two. But the orange car behind is possibly getting a double toe. So this could be good for Klaus Halsig. Danny Henry, Ron Trenka. Danny Henry on the inside. That's important. But Trenka, very nice and late onto the break and gets the, the move done. He keeps that car on the island. But super, super close. This is the battle for sixth place. And Danny Henry, Ron Trenka with Ron Trenka in front. When they went over the start-finish line, actually, Henry's nose was in front by 23 thousandths of a second. But it was the position going into the first chicane that allowed uh, Ron Trenka to retain that position. There he is for Greystone GT. But here, coming to the Ascari chicane, is car number seven, Adalberto Batista. Sixth yesterday after an incident for both of the drivers. Tommy Pintos in the second half of the race, Adalberto in the first today, of course, they go the other way around and no incidents from either. But there was the moment, of course, with the uh, number seven bouncing off the circuit at the second Lesmos. That's when Tommy Pintos thought, you know what, I'm going to come in. Pit window had just opened. Battle for second here, though. Tommy is getting closer and closer. Gonzalo de Andres is Eric Behrens listed at the start of the lap as just under a second down. It looks though another tenth or two in this battle for second place has gone the way of Eric. One of the two solo drivers, the other one we've just been talking about, that's Danny Henry. But actually, as they sweep through the parabolic, it must have been a slightly better entry for Gonzalo de Andres. He's opened that margin possibly very slightly. Well, let's have a look. Maybe it's oh, 0.7. Actually, it's slightly come down for Eric Behrens. I guess you always get that moment when the cars accelerate down the start, finish straight. The one in front always seems to pull clear a little bit and then it closes up again. Only two tenths of a, a second difference between uh, those guys in this uh, last lap. But the lap before, Behrens uh, gained about four tenths on. Uh, the Andres, so uh, Baron's got a lot of pace and uh, he's definitely pushing uh, the Andres. Uh, in, uh, each, in turn, the Andres is getting a little bit closer to Adalberto. Now the gap has gone down into the six second mark. That was a 6.7 uh, behind uh, Batista. So, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, 10 minutes, 10, 11 minutes to go. It's doable. If uh, Adalberto doesn't keep his pace strong enough, uh, the Andres will be right up uh, with him towards the end of the race. Oh. Danny Henry, just a little moment out of the first chicane, and all his hard work has come undone. He's fallen back there, running through the gravel, and positions changing. Suddenly, Klaus Halsig says, uh, I thank you very much, and for Danny Henry. Oh, he was right in the mix there, and uh, Klaus Halsig gains position. Let's take a look at what happened, Tommy. Down is the white and black car in the middle of Danny Henry. Seems all right on the way into the chicane, the first chicane, and then... Just ran wide, really, and uh, maybe a little bit too eager on, on the throttle, a little, little bit too soon, and uh, just pushed him wide into the gravel. And there's, there's no grip there. Famously, no grip. It says it in the race driver's handbook, what you need. Right, Alberto Batista leading the race, the number seven SMC Motorsport. Artura by 6.8 seconds. Gonzalo de Andres has been closing in in recent laps. He's got a degree of pressure, though. He's got Eric Behrens. There it is, the uh, Alfa Racing. Black and gold Artura giving chase, giving chase, trying to get close enough to get a toe down the start, finish straight, maybe gaining a tiny little bit there. Gap between them under half a second now, so he has been chipping away. Gain 0.4 of a second, gain 0.2 of a second, and another 0.2 of a second last time around for the black and gold Alpha B racing car. Very even match these guys, but still a good tenth, almost two tenths 
uh, in, in uh, Eric's advantage again. So uh, for the last three laps, uh, yeah, Eric has been able to close that gap, but uh, passing is another story. The clock continues to count down nine minutes and a bit of small change left for SMC Motorsport. Will they make it not just two wins in two days, Saturday and Sunday here at Monza, but two wins for their two cars? Yesterday, it was the turn of the number 11 crew. Today, it could be the number seven, of course. They didn't have the extra long, extra seven seconds at the pit stop, but they're more than seven, well, they were more than seven seconds clear. So it depends where the bragging rights are going to fall. But if they could take victory today for the team, for SMC Motorsport, to build on the success of the sister car, the championship leading car, the one we're looking at now, the number 11 entry uh, with Gonzalo de Andres, well, that at least would put a smile on their faces. Looking back to the 570S class, it's uh, number 22 ahead of 60. It's Ryan James ahead of Herman Bacchus. Gap between them, 16 seconds, so it's slightly stretching uh, in the favour of the number 22 car into by Greystone GT. Their own battle within, the, within this overall wall. But the real battle at the moment is Eric Behrens driving solo. He's in third, looking for second place. Lots and lots of pressure on Gonzalo de Andres. Gonzalo didn't put a wheel wrong yesterday, but the sister car had a, a slight problem. That has been sorted, and maybe that made it an easy ride. Today, this is not an easy ride, Tommy. Great exit there for, out of the Parabolica for Eric. He's right up on the slipstream. This could be the move into the first chicane. Yeah, closing, closing all the way towards the end. Is he going to be offered the inside? No, I will only offer you the outside. But then, of course, to the address, he's going to actually go. Well, that was very, very late breaking. I thought we were going to have a compromise entry for car number 11 for DeAndres and Eric Behrens would just have to just suck it up. But again, a better exit from the number 11. He's fallen from second to third, but he could be back into second place by the time they sweep up through the Biasoni to the second chicane. But it looks as though Eric Behrens has just done enough. Great move by Eric there on the outside of uh, the first chicane. Very bold move, but uh, he made it stick. And uh, yeah, you know, impressive by those two guys. Really uh, good racing, very clean racing by the, uh, the M drivers. Yeah, and a real opportunity for them to just understand a little bit more every time you come out on a circuit about, you know, where to place a car. I mean, you can imagine on all sorts of simulators. And the drivers for this McLaren Trophy can go to Woking and uh, try the work simulators. And that's a whole new game. But even on the most basic game, everyone has an idea of how to drive Monza. But then they kept turned up here. It's been newly resurfaced and the level of grip is entirely different. Yes, the surface is fantastic. Everybody's really praising uh, the, the track here at Tamonza. They've done a fantastic job. And, uh, and uh, I think the gain in the lap is something like second, a second and a half. So, uh, but yeah, uh, also the uh, reprofiling of the curves means that they can use the curves quite easily now. Uh, they're, very, they're very gentle on the cars. So, uh, yeah, but look at Barons now already pulling up a gap uh, against uh, DeAndre. So this is, this is great news for the number seven car leading that uh, obviously now has the number 11 in third place and uh, scoring only 10 points, not 12. Yeah, and it doesn't look as though they're going to get any further assistance. But, you know, you never know. It's an outside shot for the number seven crew of Adalberto uh, Batista and uh, Thomas Pintos. They came here with really quite a points deficit. Are they catching the front-running cars, though? No, uh, six, six seconds. Actually, I'll tell you what, they are. A second was gained on that lap, not just a, pl a pass for position. But I honestly don't think in uh, six minutes that we'll see that coming in. Now, what we are seeing, uh, look in the background of the shot. You've got Ron Trenker. You've got Kevin Halsick in the orange car and Danny Henry, who had his own moment, went bouncing over the kerb on the exit of the first chicane a short while ago. He's caught up all over again. Can he overtake all over again? Well, that's what he's there for. Let's see what he can do. Danny always entertains us. He's a, he's a hard racer. He had a bit of a moment there coming out of the first chicane, but he's back on track again and uh, and uh, yeah, behind Halsick. And, uh, but Trenka is really impressing me now. He's really holding his own, racing really well. Had a bit of a sort of an off time yesterday, and uh, but I saw him and Duncan Tappy in the truck, sort of talking about uh, you know learning the track a bit more. And I'm sure uh, Duncan's uh, input uh, has helped uh, Ron really focus for this race, and is doing an amazing job. Mind management. Oh, Danny Henry doesn't really like his right-hand tires, dipping them on the exit of the first chicane all over again. So uh, he'll have to consider that because of the dust on the tires and just not being able to get the power down as soon as you wanted. That his chance. He played catch up. He got onto the tail of Klaus Halsig. Now he's possibly running out of time to do it all over again, but no one tell Danny. Look, he's already closing in as they get to the next chicane. That's the second chicane. Well, making life a little hard for himself, but he's nothing if not a charge of Danny Henry. Slight bit of bodywork damage if you're looking at Klaus Halsig's uh, bright orange Artura. 
yeah, that bodywork damage really isn't doing very much at all, and uh, it's not really costing him any, any time. Just a, it looks like a, a third element of a wing or something, but there's not. It's really not. Uh, perhaps a little bit of drag there, but uh, nothing, nothing too major. You know, we we're talking about uh, Duncan Tappy and uh, Ron Tranker as a pairing and working together. Obviously, Denny Harry as a solo entry. The yeah, but we have for next year a third class that we're going to introduce, which is the Pro class. The Pro class in the Artura Trophy will be made of silver drivers. And uh, you can do it as a pair or solo. And uh, so this is new for next year. We have uh, the, the two classes remain, the Pro-Am and the M, but we'll introduce the Pro class alone with two silver drivers. So you're not allowed platinum and gold in that class. It'll be just silver. And same format in terms of pit stops. So the guy that qualifies has to do the race for which he qualifies for. And, uh, but yeah, so that's exciting, giving you know, young talent uh, the, uh, the opportunity to uh, come into the McLaren fold and uh, become uh, you know, a McLaren sort of academy uh, driver. And will that be the same in the American series? Is the North American series coming for 2025? That is, that is the intention, yes. There you go. Different, different strings on your bow. Right, Ron Trank has really driven a very, very good race today. He's got Klaus Halsing all over his tail and catching the pair of them. Again, again dipping his wheel wide on the exit of the first chicane. It's Danny Henry. He's got the speed, but he's running out of time in which to make that passing manoeuvre. He's sitting down in eighth position. Sixth is definitely a possibility. He's got to time his move and not keep running wide out of that first chicane. Between first and second, though, Adalberto Batista to Eric Behrens. 5.6 seconds. That should be enough to take victory. And so important for the number seven crew of Batista and Tommy Pintos that their sister car, number 11, finishes further back in third place. There is the number 11. The background of the shot doesn't look as though that's going to be able to advance. So it does mean that the huge points advantage that the number 11 crew had going into, the, into this meeting and then into this, this, this afternoon's race is going to come down. That's very good news indeed to keep that championship super exciting. That's great to see, to be honest. I mean, it's two and a half minutes to go. I don't think that gap will, can be uh, really uh, uh, diminished uh, in, in, in any sense that will challenge the, uh, the lead of the race, uh, which means then the battle goes to Spain, you know, between the Spanish uh, cars. And uh, they'll be, uh, you know, you couldn't write it better, could you, really? Yeah, and, they uh, can bring their, their Spanish families, their home crowd, boost the crowd. And, you know, it's a proud moment for any driver who can race at home. But if you can then clinch a championship at home, that is going to be something super, super special. Eric Behrens in second place, running solo, and he's just set his fastest lap of the race. He's 5.2 seconds down. The margin has continued to fall, but it's uh, just too late in the race for any advantage to come his way. But certainly he, he's driven very well. And now Klaus Halsig finally making a move around the outside of Ron Trenka, and it's quite possible that Ron will lose two places. Did he make a slightly poor run through the parabolica? Maybe we don't know, but Danny Henry's going to take a look as well. He's getting a double toe. And how are they going to explode? Actually getting quite close to Fiona James, who's uh, just a few seconds up the road. But on the brakes, on the brakes, on the brakes. Neat, tidy. Danny Henry, oh dear, he sort of semi-thought about it. And now that's compromised his own exit to the chicane and he's dipping his wheels again. I think he's maybe diving a little too deep into the first chicane every time and therefore having a compromised line. But let's uh, take a look at a replay of our race leader, Adalberto Batista. You haven't got much longer to concentrate. And at the second chicane, <sighs> suddenly Eric Behrens is getting a whole lot closer. And uh, I'm sure Adalberto Batista will keep it together. But just does your concentration maybe start to go? You're counting down to the finish. So thank goodness from his point of view, his advantage was over five seconds going on to probably what is the penultimate lap of the race because that was a scare. He had a moment yesterday up at the second of the Lesmos, but uh, today... It makes you think, does he have it? brake issues potentially did he just lose the brakes there at the end but uh, or just a lack of concentration as you say Bruce it could be um, but uh, luckily he's got enough of a gap there only one lap to go so he really needs to keep it together yeah this is final lap he starts at 3.1 seconds clear and Danny Henry has dropped it in that battle flighted with Klaus Henrik and Ron Trenker he'd been running a little bit loose for a while maybe he too had braking problems but he is there with various bits of his car scattered away and he's digging to make his passage down to Australia unfortunately there but uh, what a shame Danny Henry driving solo pushing so hard and uh, that probably means it, that's at uh, is that turn seven it's the it's the second lesmo, the lesmo. and uh, i do that probably means there's going to be no overtaking for <laughs> in the background of the shot eric behrens jumping over the curbs at the second chicane and let's see what happened looking for the white and black car all in zone just trying to carry so much speed into the corner there and uh, beaching his car danny henry his race is run but the race itself is almost run because uh, 
coming through the gravel. <laughs> a lot of gravel came onto the track. You can see our race leader, Alberto Batista, kicking up a cloud as he went through it. But what's happening all the time, the black and gold car of Eric Behrens, 5.2 seconds down a lap and a half ago, 3.1 seconds down at the start of this lap, and he's gaining, gaining. Surely he cannot haul him in. Who's gonna, no one's going to outbreak themselves into the third chicane, but the tightest line through there will be taken by Eric Behrens, and surely it won't be enough. One straight and one long corner to go for Alberto Batista. I'm sure when he gets out of the car, he'll, he'll have a bit of a laugh about the moment he had just a lap ago. But that was a big scare, a big wake up for the, the crew that will probably go through to take victory. Tommy Pintos in the pits will be sitting in and be looking at the screens. He'll have his head in his hands, but now he can take it out of his hands and he can enjoy what's going to happen. The championship battle is closing up and... Victory by, well, really not very much. Adalberto Batista, number seven, wins by 2.1 seconds for Eric Behrens. Gonzalo de Andres will come through in third place. And the 570S uh, battle will be won by Ryan James in the car, started by Ollie James. So that's it from us. And the championship battle for the McLaren Trophy has closed right up. Victory today for Tommy Pintos and for Adalberto Batista. And thank you very much to Tommy.